Hi, this is Virginia Watson. Virginia, how you doing? Fine, how are you? I'm great, man. It's good to talk to you. It's really good to talk to you, too. I dialed the wrong number the first time. <laughs> That's okay. Hey, we... had a... No, go ahead. I just said, and I had a, a panic attack. Like, <laughs> oh, my God, I'm not going to talk about my program now. No, God, no. <laughs> no, that was okay. Crazy. That was okay. We were, I was going to wait on you. It didn't matter. We, we're going to be here till 9 o'clock. Uh, we got another guest. But, uh, hey, you, you were safe. I was, wasn't going nowhere till you got on the line. Edna's probably going to beat me up when I uh, get off of this interview because I called her and I'm like, well, I called the number and it was disconnected. So what do I do now? <laughs> and um, I guess that's she my told girl. Me. <laughs> yeah, I'm really grateful. Yeah, she. No, we're grateful to have you on. How you doing today? I'm really, really good. I'm just, you know, from the time I wake up until the time I go to sleep, it's celebration for daddy on the 17th of May my life right now wow. it is all consuming but it's a it's a good journey it's a a refreshing kind of experience after 20 years of not having my father on the planet to be able to you know celebrate his life and his music at a time 20 years and then have something like the loss of my dad's protege i used to always call him my father's protege who have lost him to this week yeah. has been even bigger than that. It's been purple rain with guitars all down my throat. Yeah, it's it's, it's been quite a week. You quite know, a week. I thought about that. I was thinking about that last night. I was uh, I t- I sent uh, our girl an email, Edna, and I said um, um, I was going through all of Johnny's catalog, and it just took me back. You know, back to when. You know, my mom used to play his music, so I remember this voice all through my house, like, you know, on Real Mother For You, and uh, like, yep. and, and the song Ain't That A Bitch, like, those were two of her songs, and I listened to the, you know, you're a kid, I was a kid back then, you know, I didn't pay much, you don't, you don't pay attention to lyrics or a beat or anything, and I had some other people at my house who were also musicians, and we were, like, listen, listening to it, and it's, you know, like, I was just like, whoa, wait a minute, you know, Johnny was the real deal, like the real deal on with his acts, with his guitar. But he had one of the greatest vocals back then. And when I listened right. to Real Real Mother, I was like, this dude is singing his butt off, like singing. And he's got so many other songs, but what a great catalog and what a legend your father was. And still I mean, is. And I still is to this day. I sorry for people. Yeah, and, you know, I just feel sorry for people that you still have a chance, but I feel sorry for people who haven't had a chance to get to know my dad and and more specifically know him by the way that he created his words to the world and mm-hmm. the melodic aspect that went to it. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm going back down memory lane, and I'm learning things about my dad that, you know, it, a lot of people always think that you should know every single thing about your celebrity parent, mm-hmm. but oftentimes you're just their kid. Absolutely. And you don't really care it. so much about what they're doing. Exactly. They're just your dad. Are you going to make it to my football game exactly to watch right. me get the crowd? I just want homecoming queen. Right. You just want dad. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And But I have learned so much over the 20 years, and so many people who I've, you know, had the pleasure of running into out there on the street or at a conference. Tell me their story about their experience or what they've learned about my life, and they teach me. And I just think that it's so important that we keep these stories of our legends alive. I have the greatest respect for Benjamin Franklin. Don't get Mm. me wrong. Mm -hmm. But we are in 2016, and there's been a 100 years of black history that we just need to get in there and hold on to. Because we don't know where we're going if we don't know where we've been. Correct. And That's to right. have a That's chance right. to do a concert like this and have all these cool people come and sing my dad's song for my dad and raise money for a cause that I think that he would flip his lid like, I would be a genius to hear right about now because right. this was a good idea. Because he loves kids and he loves music and he ever and he's the musician's musician. Exactly. So musicians come to my dad. So picture him being alive right now 
and all the people that he could put in play yeah. to make an impact on a young person's life and their decision about keeping music real and keeping the legacy real and keeping the the, the history real. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, while you're talking about it, let's tell the audience a little bit and everybody in the studio what this foundation is about and what this uh, event is about. Because you're okay. raising money. Well, you're raising money for yep. a cause. I, I just became a professional beggar, probably <laughs> around <laughs> August of 2015. <laughs> I that a getaway excursion with my catalog manager. His name is Atron Gregory, and he used to be the road manager for NWA for about 20 years, or a little bit more. He knows all the dirt. But he doesn't. <laughs> he never tells me anything. That's right. Because I already know him myself. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> but, you know, we went away, and I just needed to get my head clear because, you know, 20 years I have been managing this catalog. And we have been blessed with so many wonderful opportunities along the way. And those opportunities have to be consistent in order for this catalog to stay vital and, and be something that is relevant in our society today. Of young rappers and people who love his music and cover it and use it out on the road when they tour, I felt like, wow. It's 20 years since my dad been gone mm. and nobody's ever done anything to say, Hey man, thank you for, thank you for always being so kind. Thank you for all the gift, guitars that you've given out there mm -hmm. to just anybody you've run into who really meant something to him in that conversation. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I'm going to do a tribute concert for my dad. Mm. And then it just hit me. It's like, well, that's not enough. Yeah. I need to do something bigger that people will be able to hear his name and feel his spirit and know that he left something behind that is worthy of another young person taking the baton and start running forward. Mm -hmm. And so then came to me, it's like, I, I work at a high school in Los Angeles. I, as a matter of fact, I work at Los Angeles High School. Mm -hmm. um, I live in the neighborhood and um, I'm a community representative. And they came to one of our neighborhood meetings and said, can you guys come over to the high school and see if there's anything that you could do to volunteer to help? And they hadn't had cheerleaders in probably three and a half years. And they had a football team that won the championship the year before and went to the championship this last year and with their first squad of cheerleaders because I went over and became the cheer coach. Mm -hmm. I let 19 girls from L.A. High School, from all different walks of life, just walk in the door. And I said, everybody in this room is a cheerleader. Mm. And we start practice on Monday, and we're going to see who gets on that football field as a cheerleader. Wow. It's up to you. If all of y'all make it, then all of y'all have made it. We've got those many uniforms. We, they can make those uniforms. Mm -hmm. And 11 girls made it on the football field. And we had a really cool experience. But then I got sucked into the vortex of caring about these kids. Yeah, yeah. And we have a, a marching band that is an award-winning marching band. It's a very small band. Mm -hmm. But it had been run by a woman who was selfish mm -hmm. and <clears throat> greedy about the, the winning. And she got a program cut in half and walked right out the door on the kids, and she took instruments. Mm. And the devastation on these kids from the loss of these instruments that she took from the school really kind of compromised their ability to truly perform at their highest level. Mm -hmm. And yeah. these are the kids that stay... These are the kids that stick together. These are the kids that truly believe in what they're doing and they really want to be good at it. Mm -hmm. And somebody tried to stop them. Yeah. And I just, I couldn't, I couldn't see that happen. And so me being at LA High, this concert thing coming up, I'm like, why don't I start a foundation yeah. and raise money and get instruments and pair these kids with industry professionals in the music business to mentor them 
so that they could see what this business is. Do you want to learn how to play the instrument? Do you want to get a band, start a band? Do you want to record in the studio? Do you want to be an engineer? Do you want to be a DJ, that's, an that's MC? Great. What is it that you want? That is Let's absolutely pair. great. We have to give it back. Yeah, we have if to. If we don't give it back, you will be answering the St. Peter. And depending on what day it is, he might like you, he might not. Mm-hmm. So, you know, these are options of ours any day above this ground to give something back. And I just thought, this is perfect. And that's how the Johnny Guitar Watson Heart for Music Foundation started. And the reason why I put the heart in it is because my I father died of a heart attack. Mm-hmm. Yep. He had a big heart towards people. He loved music more than anything in the world, including us. We understood. There was a lot of love left for us to get, but he loved her. Hmm. Just like I married the Screen Actors Guild, I guess. Mm-hmm. But, right, right. You know, he he would be really, really involved in this if he were here because this would give him an opportunity to just really show how you can just be yourself and people will still like you and you don't have to change up. My dad never changed up on folks out in public, no matter how uncomfortable he may have been that day. If it, if it worked for the people who loved his music and recognized him walking down the street because... There's tons of people outside walking down the street right now. Nobody's recognizing them. Oh, yeah, right. But something happens to those particular people who are chosen to be recognized, and there's a responsibility to that because just that one day you don't know that you might be touching the heart of somebody that gives them the will to not give up. Correct. Very, the will very to true. be inspired to try to come up with something great themselves. So, you know, there are so many reasons for the – the, the the foundation and we just kick it all off on the 17th that, that is we great. just got we just got uh 10 guitars donated to us uh from a, a subsidiary of live nation the company's called sme and what they do is they book all of the acts for the big corporate event mm-hmm. so like microsoft and mercedes-benz and those kind of big corporations like that who have those huge, you know, celebrations at Christmas time or the, 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 the new year for them, their fiscal new year, whatever. And they have people like Usher and Christina Aguilera, all that kind of stuff like that. Well, they donated 10 smeared guitars. Mm. Now, what do I mean by that? Mm. Every time they have a celebrity come in, baseball player, singer, whatever, they have them sign uh, in their contract 25 or whatever or 10 or whatever. And, you know, they had some guitars that have been signed by some fabulously wonderful people, brand new in the box. But somehow between the transport of that celebrity signing it and making it back to the office, the signature got smeared. So those guitars to them have no value. Mm. But to me, they mean everything because I don't know a kid who wouldn't want a spirit guitar from Lenny Kravitz. Right, exactly. From Kelly Clarkson. Right. From Carrie Underwood. Right. From Erica Badu. I'll take them all. <laughs> all of them, right. <laughs> all of them. And so they yeah. gave them all to me. And I came up with this idea to pilot a project to just see how it will go. And I'm going to take five of those guitars to L.A. High School, uh-huh. and I'm going to take five of the other the other five guitars to Yo-Yo School of Hip Hop uh-huh. because Yo-Yo has a nonprofit yep. after-school program that she works with kids too. And so, two former guitar players of my father, who's part of the old school band, though, because we are not put the band back together mm-hmm. and going to try to get out there and tour with this music. Uh-huh. Very um, good. Two of them are going to teach guitar uh-huh. to these two different programs. And we're going to see how it works and what happens. Very, very good. And for those of you who are just tuning in, we are talking with Virginia Watson, the daughter of the late, great Johnny Guitar Watson. Um, hey. Hey, I know, right? <laughs> uh, real mother fight, my, one of my favorites. Um, so when you... By the way, that's the song I'm singing at the tribute. Wow. That's my jam. I'm singing a real mother for you. I'm so scared. (laughs) I'm scared to death. (laughs) Yes. 
Okay, I went into my own world for a minute, but I'm back. That's all right. Uh, that's what you're supposed to. That's what his music so, does. Are you still? Are you still acting? For, for for those of you who don't know, I'm on the phone with an actress, a writer, and a producer in her own right, outside of the legacy of her father. So you over there being modest. This girl has been on uh, all sorts of movies, and and you've done your thing. So tell us about your career. What are you doing outside of of working with your father's legacy are you still acting well i you know what i still try to act let's put it like that um, my every foot. day I you wake you. up and you have to deal with things right. that you don't want to deal with right. you uh you're acting but here's right. what I'll exactly. say. you know <laughs> i there 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 came i'm with i'm one of those working actors uh, just a few notches below, let's say, a Vanessa Bell Calloway. Okay. You know, Vanessa works away, and that's one of my good friends. Yeah. And that's why I use her as an example. <clears throat> she she is a steady worker. She gets television series all the time. She does guest star spots all the time. And I'm that actress that might co-star all the time. <clears throat> I get occasional series here and there on channels that people have never probably heard of before. But I still make my living as a screen actor. Uh-huh. And I also do a lot of voiceover work. Um, and oftentimes people just don't know that they've heard me, you know, sell them toilet paper, tampons, <laughs> right, cars, right. you right. know what I'm saying, and an occasional uh, animated uh, situation as well. So I still do a lot of voiceover. Uh-huh. And I am trying to get through this project to rebrand myself if you will uh-huh. and really just go get my new pictures <laughs> i need to switch my agents i just kind of let it go uh-huh. because i got into my kids at the yeah. school i thought that that cause was so important and i mean non-stop 29 years i've been chasing that you know that dream if right. you will right but all of a sudden god gave me these kids and they just became so important to me i wanted them to be happy and to have a a wonderful high school experience like I did. Mm-hmm. I think that we've, we've cut back and cut away and turned the corner on so many things that weren't denied to us. And I'm one of those products of that first group of black kids that got bust into the white school. Uh-huh. So and, am I. And, and having that, that kind of exposure and to think that these kids are not getting the same full love and experience that I had, it breaks my heart. And my, my school's population is 82% Hispanic. Uh-huh. Wow. And maybe of 11% yeah. African American, 4% Asian, and, you know, the 0.6% whatever else that's left over. Uh-huh. And I, for me, it didn't matter about who they were or, you know, what country they came from. The bottom line was that I knew they weren't happy. They they weren't experiencing what I experienced. And if it ain't broke, then why are we trying to fix it? We we have to get better at it. We can't just get relaxed. It's like having a dentist who never goes to re up. That right. he got his license in nineteen sixty nine and he's still working style nineteen sixty nine. You can't right. even get the majority of the equipment that he used back then to try to work nineteen sixty nine, but he hasn't gone to advance himself. Mm. That's scary. That is scary. And that's what I feel about the school system that I work in, unfortunately. But I won't give up on these kids. And I know that you, you can't be a whole person if you don't have the arts, if you don't have a way of expressing yourself, be it that that you're the group that does the expressing or that you're receiving the expression. It's both balanced in the scale evenly. But without it, you have lack of concern, disconnect, disregard, and then their two thumbs are just stuck on their phone. And they don't know how to talk to each other. They don't know how to look at each other in the face. I didn't want to see that happen. Right, right. And I just want to get in there and cause a little ruckus. So uh, you could say after 29 years, maybe I took a year off. Right. But I will die an actress. I will die a writer. I will die a a producer. And, you know, now I'm going to be a singer. So what, what are you talking about? I mean, right, how many right. people do you know start new careers as singers at 59 years old? Who does that? I know, right? And, and you know, age, <laughs> yeah. age is nothing but a num- number because, you know, some it's, things don't crack, if you know what I mean. 
and and let me prove to you that they don't because I dance every day. But not only do I dance every day, I'm on the old school crew for the LA Sparks in the WNBA. See, you like you you Magic doing Johnson it. You, me. You, you are doing it. You are doing it. <laughs> well, I want to say so I commend you. I commend you for taking time out from yourself, your own personal self, because you know we walk around and we we can be self consumed with building our own mm-hmm. careers. But when you you saw those kids, you do spirit obviously told you those kids needed you, and you were selfless and you did what you did. And obviously, you know God is going to bless <clears throat> you for that, and that's going to go a long way. And your legacy goes on through those kids. You know. Well, I certainly. I and certainly hope so. I hope you're telling them about Johnny, too. Well, you know what? They're, as a matter of fact, they are participating in the program on the 17th. Oh, that's, a, that's amazing. King Band, that my is color amazing. guard, and my cheerleaders. Uh-huh. They're marching in on Funk Beyond the Call of Duty. That's amazing. And then I yeah. invited Crenshaw High School's ROTC because they have a really big ROTC. And it's thick with black kids and uh-huh. brown kids and a couple of kids. And they wear these beautiful uh, army fatigue uniforms and they got a nice step on them. Uh-huh. We marched in the Martin Luther Day, the Martin Luther King Day parade together. I was representing the, the LA Sparks that day with my dance crew mm-hmm. and they were right in front of us. And I just fell in love with these kids and made friends with their director over at the ROTC at Crenshaw High School. And Crenshaw so I hmm. definitely, it's about kids. Yeah. I can't yeah. have an event without some of the kids there. Right, right. <laughs> That's great. Well, right. tell tell people where they can, outside of people being in Los Angeles, where can people donate money if they're not there? Where can people find you on social media? Where can you be found and how can people donate? Okay, well, of course we have, uh, uh, a, it, we, we have to give my dad abbreviation. My foundation name is kind of long, but it's that's okay. typical of me and my dad. We always talk a little longer than we need to. <laughs> me too describe our stories a little longer. I'm in Don't Be a Menace to South Central While Sipping Your Juice in the Hood, the longest name in the whole wide world in the movie. So this is not unusual. But we abbreviated it to JGW Heart for Music Foundation on Facebook. We have a jgwheartformusic.com, and that's where you can go and buy tickets, and you can make donations through GoFundMe. Okay, great. From that page, too. And we're still trying to raise some money because, you know, this is our first time out. And I'm learning, you know, as a brand beggar that there are steps and procedures and relationships that you have to build first in order to, you know, I, really I love have that a you're a professional beggar. Oh, yes. Kiki <laughs> I'm, I'm Shepard. Using that. You know, I don't, I don't know if you, if you know I Kiki Shepard or not. I love Kiki from, uh, from Apollo. Yes, and so she's the co-host of the show. And, you know, she has a foundation for sickle cell. Uh She lost her family member Uh to sickle cell, and she became an advocate. And so, I don't know, it's been maybe about 15 years that she may be uh, doing this annual event. We have a big bowling tournament. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, she's a pro on getting Noxzema packets and all kind of stuff for your goodie bags and stuff. Uh And she told me, she said, you're you're becoming a professional beggar. Right. And, you know, there are steps. What what I like to do is I like to you you call you drop the name so I gotta add a little bit to that for folks who don't know who Kiki Shepherd is if you watch the Apollo Kiki right? was the lady with the hot body that used to come out and take over what what would she do would she make no that was somebody so else she, she would so make when them leave you were getting voted then, on she would go over the top of their head that's right that's why I got my hand up yeah. like this like Kiki yeah, would come over and, and put her head. and Kiki I remember Kiki from Kiki is an actress also. Kiki was and a in, dancer. And she a was dancer. really a big dancer yeah. on, on Broadway. Yeah. She was in Sing Me Hell You Sing. Jennifer Holliday yeah. uh, did the play Sing Me Hell You Sing. And it was in, complete, mm-hmm. incredible. It was about the life of uh, the late, great Mahalia Jackson. Mahalia Jackson. Mahalia Jackson. Mm-hmm. I saw every episode I could see uh, was broke and was got to the point where I couldn't pay for tickets. And I would go mm-hmm. from state to state and be an usher. I was an usher wherever the thing was. That's oh, that how, is so funny. No, that's how obsessed I was with just music and, you know, I was, I was all in it. Donna Summer. Yeah. And I did, my dad sent me on one of those tours. He's like, I'm so sick of hearing about you over this Donna Summer. Yeah. And literally, I went on a, probably a six city tour uh-huh. date with Donna Summer. Uh-huh. Everything, and I really was in love with her husband from 
Brooklyn Dreams, uh-huh. but I digress. Right, but right. oh my God, I love. I want to be Donna Summer so bad. Oh my God, if I could be her, I'd be so happy. <laughs> yeah, that's I was what, a big Donna that's fan. That's how I used to think back in the seventies. Oh, I loved her. Let me ask she you was something. My queen. Do you know Phyllis yeah. Battle? Do, oh, do you know Phyllis God. Battle? Phyllis used to sing. Um, I'm, let me tell you, Phyllis, a uh, great friend of mine. She sang with the. Um, um, what was it? One Less Bell to Answer. What was that group? Um, Come on, for $50,000 on a trip to Cancun, Mexico. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, baby, hold on. Um, <laughs> damn. damn. The time it is was, running was, out, sir. Okay, You've Ma- got to get the Marilyn end. McCoo and Billy D. Williams were in Billy the, D. Williams? Billy, oh, wow. They were in the group. Who was that group? But anyway, she took the, the place dimension. of the, the Fifth, fifth dimension. dimension. So I figured uh-huh. you might know her. Uh, cause you guys have the name is so familiar. The name is so familiar. She lives in California right now, but, um, Oh, wow. But, um, we got to know how to put her in the show. Um, I mean, if you still need her, I can get her for you. She would love it. She's, she's, uh, if you think of Nancy Wilson, think of her. She's got an incredible, she's jazz. Incredible. But I'll send you, I'll email your, um, I'll email you her information and, you guys can connect. I'd like for you all okay. to connect anyway. That'd but, be fun. but I want to say that um, it was incredible talking to you. I was so excited um, to hear that we would be on the phone with you today. And I just want to say great luck, great success on your project. And we're going Thank to, you. we are going to be professionally begging at Radar Radio okay. and letting people know about this. <laughs> and I think we got enough time okay. to get some, uh, try to get some money over there to you or get some donations or something, and I know you're going to be doing this next year and the year after that, yeah. and then it's going to be so huge that it's going to be televised and it's going to be bigger than ever. So I'm going to speak yeah, that into I'm the universe so for you. Thank I know you. it's going to be great. Yes, thank you. So it was thank great you. talking to you. We'll talk to you. I want to talk to you after the event to find yeah, out how everything. Yeah, if I can tell you about all the fab- is- if I can get if I. If Bonnie Raitt shows up or not. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's <laughs> dumb, Bonnie Raitt. Right, right. <laughs> well, Virginia, it was incredible talking to you. Thank you so much for calling in. And we are definitely going to be talking to you, you after after this show. And God bless you, too. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, everybody says goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. That was great. That was great.